Thank you, Jesus. Are you refreshed? Did you press in? Did you get God's attention? Lower, please. Well, when you touch his heart, he touches yours. Amen? <laughs> Glory. Ah, would you turn to James, please? James chapter 1. I have a message from the Lord. <laughs> Y'all need to see Veggie Tales. Jonah. And he comes riding in on a camel. He says, I have a message from the Lord. And he went into this place, everybody's slapping each other with fish. It's hilarious. I guess you have to be there. James chapter 1. Glory. In verse 2. Let's speak it together, please. Is everybody there? Yeah, amen. Hoo -hoo. My brethren, count it all joy. Okay, that's it. Count it what? Oh, God. I like to tell a lot of people they need to read that over and over and over. Count it what? All joy. When you fall into very trial, various trials, not if. That word when means God's got you set up. Why? To expose. To expose the impurities in your enemy. Amen? The impurities in your enemies. The problem is, is too many people get so caught up in the trial, they're not looking at what's influencing them. They're not taking that time. They're not waiting. And they're not able to resist. Knowing that your testing of your faith produces what? <laughs> patience. That means endurance. If you don't endure, you become a patient. Amen? Verse 4. But let patience have its what? Its perfect work that you may be what? Perfect and what? Complete and then what? Lacking nothing. I mean, what more do you want? But you got to let something happen. You must allow the perfect work of patience to manifest in your life. The perfect work of patience is the weight of resistance. That's W-A-I-T. It is called the weight of resistance. That's the name of tonight's teaching. Weight of resistance. The perfect work of patience is the weight of resistance. In Psalm 40. Psalm 40, please. The weight of resistance. Oh, happy days. We're getting closer. We're getting real close. Things are about to pop. We're going to see Holy Ghost popcorn. <laughs> you know how popcorn's popped? It has to get real hot. And then the seeds go poop. It's going to get real hot. Psalm 40, verse 1. Let's speak it together. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me, and he what? Heard my cry. But he had to wait patiently. He also brought me up of a horrible, out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock. And establish my steps. 
He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. He waited patiently. In other words, he endured. He resisted the perfect work of blessings and favor was given to him. Because he did what? He, he was involved in the weight of resistance. See, so many times, you can't resist without weight. Amen? Does everybody understand that? There's a place where you and I must wait. Because so many times we want to react instead of respond. That's called the flesh, the old man. And I've shared many times before that you must choke, react. <laughs> until respond comes. Amen? You must choke the flesh until respond comes. And in this, to, he waited, he endured, he waited patiently, he resisted the perfect work. It says here then, then what happened? He put a new song in his mouth. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. But the rescue is awesome. Look at verse 4. Blesses the man who what? Makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, there are more than I can number. Again, so he waited on the Lord. He endured. He, he, and it allowed the weight of resistance to come forth. And it was the perfect work of patience bringing him through this perfect work where it released blessing and favor. Everyone say blessing and favor. How many of y'all want to be blessed? How many of y'all want to be favored? Don't you want to be God's favored? Amen. Go to Philippians 2. Phillips. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 12. The weight of resistance. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my what? Absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to both will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in a day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Work out. To work out is the weight of resistance. Does everybody get that? It is the what? It is the weight of resistance. While you're waiting you are resisting. You are not allowing the reaction of the flesh. You are waiting for the response of the spirit. So while you're waiting, you're actually resisting. The problem is people can't wait long enough. So the weight of resistance will have no effect. And in their waiting, they're not resisting. Oh, I'm just going to wait, but I'm going to do everything else. Doesn't work. James 4. Hallelujah. James chapter 4. Starting at verse 1. Says, speak it with me, please. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? 
You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. And when you do ask, you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures or your flesh. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud. But what? Gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Okay, so proud to be proud, proud has no resistance. <laughs> they were on those who are prouder, and they have no resistance. They are unable to resist while waiting for response of the spirit. As I've called them before, they're nuclear reactors. Again, we've got to get into the, the, again, there is a level where God is trying to bring us to now. And it is the weight of resistance. It's a level. He wants to bring us to everything is going up to a higher level and in everything, integrity, everything is going up to a higher level in the body. In Psalm 19. Psalm 19, verse 12. Psalm 19, verse 12. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. <clears throat> Keep back your servant also from what? Presumptuous sins. <clears throat> Let them not have dominion over you. Then I shall be blameless. And I shall be innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer, presumptuous sin is a place and position that results in a dangerous place and opens advantages of the enemy for future manipulation. <clears throat> to assume is very dangerous. It's number, number one of our rules here, do not assume. And when an individual is involved in, in, in that area, it's the lack of a weight of resistance. So in this... Un, when, Unable to reach a level of the endurance to resist while waiting stops the perfect work of patience. It stops it. Boom. And, and when it stops the perfect work of patience and, li and the individual can come into an area where they live in lack, always seeking for fulfillment. They live in what? Lack, always seeking for fulfillment. Because they can never be fulfilled. They live a life of assumption. <clears throat> and of course, the lack of resistance while waiting will cause them to mislead. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 <clears throat> Peter chapter 5. In verse 8. Let's speak it. Be what? Alert. Which means alert. Be what? Vigilant. Because you're what? Adversary. The devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he what? Who he may devour. It says resist him steadfast in the faith knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Now, when an individual falls into a place and is not able to reach a level of the weight of resistance, they are unable to release the sufferings of fear, anxiety, insecurity, guilt, shame, sicknesses, certain uh, traumas and events 
in everyday life. Loss of loved ones, they can never shake that off. It still connects to them no matter what. Why? Because of the lack of no weight of resistance. They can never reach that place of perfect strengthening and fulfillment by Christ in his presence. The area of the ability to resist, the ability to wait and resist while you're waiting is essential. And this is what God is requiring us. We must reach a level because too many people are actually backsliding and falling away because they're not able to do this. They cannot be perfected. They cannot be strengthened. And they will miss the opportunities God has. <clears throat> In Hebrews chapter 12. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, verse 3. Let's speak it together, please. Hebrews 12, verse 3. For consider him who endured, it's Jesus, such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise chasing of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. And for whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure the chastening, God deals with you as with sons. But what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers and you are illegitimate and not sons. I'm going to tell you something. There are some individuals who just refuse to be corrected. That's chastening. They are illegitimate. They are unable to fall into that level of weight of, of resistance. For they indeed, for uh, uh, furthermore, we have, verse 9, furthermore, we had have human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect, shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his what? Holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. It's called suffering. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been what? Trained by it. So it's a process of training. But many people want to run from it. Or they want to blame or whatever. Or make excuses or justify it. Many can't endure the chastening. Because they've not allowed it to and they can't, uh, complete in its working. They miss out in the training and the process. Because their inability to resist while waiting. I would call them anxious. In Romans 13. Romans 13. See, we wait on the Lord. And while we're waiting on the Lord, we're resisting the influence of the enemy. <clears throat> Romans 13. Okay. Praise God. And starting at verse 1, please. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinances of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you not want, do you want to be afraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. Again, many resist counsel of the Lord and brings judgment. 
due to no weight of resistance, the perfect work of patience. The ability to resist while waiting is the perfect work of patience and is a fruit of the spirit through cooperation. An individual is able to wait and resist while waiting. It is a fruit of the spirit. If an individual is not able to do that, it is the fruit of the flesh. 2 Timothy 2. Second Timothy two and verse one. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace, the plan that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to who? Faithful men who are able to teach others also, men and women. You therefore must what? Endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Look at, welcome to the earth. You're going to have hardship. Things, you're going to be disappointed. Things are going to happen. Your animals are going to die. Your family's going to die. And you're going to die. But praise God, die to yourself for it. You got nothing to worry about. Amen? But, you know, hardship is an area which brings training. It's where he says, counter all joy when you fall into these areas. Amen? So in this, we must be able to resist while we're waiting for the next command. So many times people are trying to bring self-fulfillment in the waiting process because they're not able to resist the influence of the enemy. And they fall into a false fulfillment and it brings dangerous life. Hallelujah. We must endure hardship. This is the weight of resistance. It can become very dangerous to the body of Christ or we become very dangerous to the powers of darkness depending on where we're at. Amen. You know, these individuals step into a place and don't realize it that good is enough. That what? Good is enough. I'm good. They can only look at good, but they can't look at righteous. Because they're blinded to righteousness. Because this is where the enemy influences. This is where the enemy infiltrates. Because if a person cannot resist while waiting, it, the enemy takes great advantage of this. And he brings justification and he shows up with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and says, here, take some. And there's only good and good. Well, I'm good. I'm not evil, so I must be good. But there's no produce or products of good fruits of righteousness. There's no waiting. There's no endurance. 1 Corinthians 10. We see this all over the world. Put people all over the world running to things for false fulfillments, <clears throat> false medications, demonic doctors. Hallelujah. In verse 12, let's speak it together. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the wave escape that you may be able to what? Bear it. I'm telling you, many people miss the escape because they're not able to resist while they're waiting. Therefore, my beloved, flee from what? Idolatry. I speak as to wise men. Judge for yourselves what I say. Powerful. And I built to resist temptation. No weight of resistance. Unstable souls. 
Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, verse 13. And Jesus said to him, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These, likewise, are the ones sown on stony ground, who, when they hear the word, immediately they receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when, ten, when tribulation, hello, suffering, or persecution arises, or chastening, for the word's sake, immediately they what? They stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word. And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things entering in choke the word, and it becomes what? Unfruitful. Now you've got to think about this. Are these people able to resist while waiting? No. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word accept it. And bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. Hallelujah. Again, these individuals have no weight of resistance. There is no advancement. This weight of resistance is learned. It's learned. Say it with me. It's learned. It must be put into practice so it becomes a part of your life. It's just something that just doesn't come and you get it all at once. You must put it into practice. You'll be challenged by the enemy to see if you're putting it into practice or not. <clears throat> Psalm 27. Psalm 27, verse 11. <laughs> Psalm 27, verse 11. Let's speak it. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in the smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and be what? Strengthened. Amen? But while you're waiting on the Lord, you must be able to resist the enemy. Because if you're not able to resist the enemy, then you stop waiting on the Lord. Amen? Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40, 28. Have you not heard, or have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Now, will this happen if you can't resist? No. No. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That, he says renew their strength. See, your strength and my strength needs to be renewed on a daily basis. 
So there are things that God is having us wait on. Amen. And he even says, even after you, you've, you've done what I asked you to do, then I can release the promise. Amen. So as we're in the process of doing the things that he wants us to do, we're waiting on things. We must resist the enemy in every area so that the promise can be released. If we fall short of that, it can't be released. Or what happens is we miss that opportunity. Is everybody okay? Do you understand what's happening here? Glory. So you and I need to be renewed every day in our strength. Why? Because we'll fall into a place of compromise. And we don't, look at compromise is the same thing as assumption as far as I'm concerned. Hallelujah. And I'm going to close at Psalm 15. Psalm 15. Simple teaching. But very, very powerful what's put into practice. Hallelujah. In verse 1, let's speak it all together. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle, who may dwell in your holy hill, who walks uprightly and works righteousness, works righteousness, and speaks the truth in his or her heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friends, in whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who what? Fear the Lord. And he swears to his own hurt and does not what? Change, doesn't compromise. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. That is a guideline, Psalm. It is so powerful. Shall never be moved. The weight of resistance. Are you able to wait? Are you able to resist while you're waiting? Amen? You know, again, it takes practice, and we can be renewed in strength every time. We will be challenged. We will be tempted. You can overcome everything and anything if you'll wait on the Lord and resist while you're waiting. You'll allow the perfect work of patience to have its place. You won't lack. You'll have wisdom. You'll have everything you need. It is that simple. But the flesh hates it. The self hates it. Because the self lives a life of its own will. Do what you feel like. This is where the many fall out of position because of emotional decisions. And that's how the enemy knows how to play people. That's the one thing that must be resisted while you're waiting is the emotion. Amen? Very vital, vitally important these days because it's being influenced and released all over. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you give us the patience to endure and the weight of resistance that we may fulfill the call, purpose, and destiny and receive the blessings and promises that you have so much for us to gain. And bring glory to your name in everything we do. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God. Give somebody a hug and tell them you did it. <laughs>